what are the most asked topics of dsa any min max optimization problem i was also asked in a google interview students in first and second year sort of neglect dsa in third year they suddenly wake up and they want to you know crack companies there are crash courses do 10 20 problems on each topic so all around 150 200 problems on topics like uh, heaps hash tables dp dd when we talk about on campus and off campus placements so is there a difference in weightage of doing dsa or is it very much similar If it is off campus, if it is through referral, there are higher chances you get an enter. How much DSA should be done? Is doing lead code enough? And there are certain shortcuts available in the market. One of them is like my course on coding minutes. Hey everyone, I am Sanskar, and in today's video, I am talking to Pratik Narang, who is the co-founder of Coding Minutes. If you are an engineering student, then you must watch this video because I have talked to Pratik exactly how you can crack your dream tech job. I asked him. What is the best method to practice DSA? I even asked him what are the most frequently asked topics of DSA in coding interviews. And before we begin, there's a short announcement for you that because you're a part of my community, Pratik has offered a hundred percent discount on his DSA Level Up course, available on Udemy. And to avail the discount, you need to apply this coupon code Level Up Giveaway Twenty Three. The coupon is valid only for the first hundred users until nineteenth of August. So make sure you avail this opportunity and learn DSA from the pro himself and master your concepts like DP and graphs and crack your coding interview. Awesome. Let's skip to the video. So, in your opinion, why do you feel that DSA is asked for company interviews when they come to college? Why is DSA asked? See, it's about the fundamentals. Okay, so even if people will say ChatGPT has come, it will replace our job, right? But if you look at ChatGPT, also based on the fundamentals of the language, right? So it is giving you some prompts. You have to use English, right? Similarly, with software, you are building something. You need the A B C D of software, right? You need to know how the data will be stored, how it will be, what kind of operations will be done on the data, right? So at the end, AI can. help you in uh, building things faster maybe uh, giving you some recommendations but you as a engineer must have a very solid understanding of the foundation concept and dsa it's like a b c d to the english and dsa is to the computer science and the software development right so irrespective of how much we progress the fundamentals would be always needed so what do you feel is the best time for a college student to practice dsa like first year second year when is the best time to practice dsa See, I would say like computer science is a huge ocean. There are so many things that people can do in the four years of their life, right? So if you're diving into the ocean, I would say learn a programming language is the first step. Second step should be your problem solving and DSA. And as additional steps, you can go into web development. You can go into Android. You can go into machine learning, right? Now suppose you're building a web, right? Or maybe you're building a game. Now in that game, you need you might need uh, certain algorithms. Maybe two objects are colliding or not. So that is like solving a small problem. while building a software right maybe you want to build something like excel and you want to build a uh, right. functionality to build a fi- filter button right so when you're doing filtering again it's about solving a dsa problem right so even the projects that you're going to do they will be solving some kind some sort of dsa problem in between so it's always better to uh, move gradually in this order starting from a programming language dsa then your more technologies you can pick according to your interest and choice but sometimes pratik what happens is that students in first and second year sort of neglect dsa and coding all together in third year they suddenly wake up and they want to you know crack companies so then what should be the balance between doing dsa and doing development see uh, ideally it is recommended that you should start as early as possible right but if even if you have like uh, uh, wasted your first year or second year you can still start dsa in your like as early as you can right maybe it's your summer vacation you can do it right so there are crash courses there are other courses right so it is possible that you might not be able to get that much time for practice but at least you should be able to grasp the fundamentals do 10 20 problems on each topic so if you solve around 150 200 problems on topics like uh, heaps hash tables dp dd and other topics as you are already aware of so it gives you a decent start to start applying to companies and sit for interviews right so ultimately your fundamentals should be very clear which i feel anyone can do it in uh, let's say 3 to 4 months of time if you like study regularly during that period right but otherwise 
early you start the better it is right so it is often said that the best time to plant a tree was 10 years ago the second best time is now right so if you have wasted some time now is the time you have to cover those things up right also do you feel that when we talk about on campus and off campus placements so is there a difference in weightage of doing dsa or is it very much similar so i would say uh, regarding the like it might be different from company to company on campus what happens is like if there are so many people applying companies might build, put a filter on your cgpa or some kind of online test but if it is off campus if it is through referral there are higher chances that you get an interview right and the follow up process which starts from the interview round that should not matter whether it is on campus or it is off campus so generally it is that the startups which need uh, which are at early age right so they might not give a lot of time for you to learn on their tech stack right so they would ask that maybe more of a interview would be based on your uh, tech stack product right less of a dsa but the companies which are well established they need people who are good at the fundamentals who are good at dsa mm-hmm. and they have the time so that you can ramp up on their tech stack as well right so this is one difference between big companies and early age startups as well right? also very much times i'm asked this question that how much dsa should be done like obviously nothing is enough but let's say if someone wants to just do the bare minimum of dsa then should they be doing these code shift problems code forces problems like competitive coding as well or is doing lead code and around 600 700 problems enough for doing dsa i would say 600 700 is also too much of problems you need lot of time to solve so many questions right so again there are certain shortcuts available in the market so it's one of them is like my course on coding minutes i have two courses uh, dsa essentials which teaches you the basics of data structures from arrays to graphs and secondly if you know the basics there is a dsa level up course which teaches you which shows you a flavor of interview problems on different topics what are the kind of problems in based on heap hash tables cp graphs uh, greedy algorithms right so it gives you a flavor or gist of the interview questions across all topics and there are certain books also which are popular one is cracking the uh, coding interview by gail lackman it has good a good collection of around 150 to 200 problems you can do that book there is a book by narsimha karumanji it is also a good book so it also has uh, all the classical interview problems that are good enough to analyze the patterns which are frequently uh, used in problem solving right so if you do like these courses or these books i think it's a good start otherwise if you're enjoying it if you have time then you can dive as much deep as you want into competitive programming right right from your experience prateek what have you observed that what are the most sort of asked topics if we talk about companies while hiring in india what are the most asked frequently asked topics of dsa see as a like interviewer is free to ask anything right so you cannot read what interviewer right. is going to ask but given like the competition is increasing many people are preparing for dsa and other topics so it is more likely that the more trickier uh, topics would be asked like so in dsa we consider graphs as a tricky, to- tricky topic dynamic programming as a tricky topic because they they are not hard but they test your thinking right so you have to think little more while solving problems on graphs dynamic programming and there could be problems which are using mix and match of concepts maybe arrays combined with sliding right. window and hashing something of that can on so less of a straight forward problems so more tricky problems can be asked right i'm not saying interviews will be hard so generally what i have felt i have given 6 7 rounds of dsa while uh, i was getting shortlisted for google so i did clear all the rounds so i what i felt the level of problems was medium but uh, you need like certain logical thinking to approach those problems okay so i did some problems in a brute way some i was able to optimize little better using binary search or using some other data structure so think of data structures and algorithm as a tool to so- pro- solve problems okay so so if you think if you start thinking okay given this problem what are the tools i can use right so certain problems i will suggest they will have this wording in the question find minimum of the maximum sum of something right or do maximum of the minimum of something so there are many min max optimization problems right so one of i was also asked in in a google interview 
So what I knew from my experience was that min max optimization problems are generally dynamic programming problems or their binary search problems. So you have to narrow down the approach by looking at the problem statement. Right. Can this problem solved using graph? Can I solve it using DP? Can it solve using sorting? So you have to think of iterate on the possible scenarios in your mind and then try to hit one of the solutions which you think will work well, right? So this is how I do it. Also, what do you think is the best frequency to practice DSA? Like once you have gained your initial knowledge, you have solved some problems and now you're switching over to development. So just to stay in the loop that you don't forget your concepts and what you have learned so far, what frequency you think is enough to practice DSA problems? So I think if you have done the basics well, you have solved around 20 problems on each topic. You do not need to spend time daily on DSA. You can carry on with your dev projects with these. But if we talk about online contests, which most of you will apply right, while sitting for interviews, one thing that is important is time-bound practice. So I would su suggest that if you can do it, do one contest every week, maybe on code courses. You can um, do a contest and that will help you to do a time-bound practice, which is very important for online rounds. Right. Okay? And this way you will keep in touch and you will also not end up wasting a lot of time on DSA. Right? Also, Pratik, where do you stand on how much DSA should be done? Or like some folks in recent times have completely skipped DSA and focused on contributing to open source projects and, you know, building projects of their own and submitting them to companies and then getting directly hired off campus, completely skipping DSA. So where do you stand on that? See, there is no, I would say there is no fixed rule for selection, right? Like being good at something like if you're into top 10 percent of the web developers you're definitely going to get a job right so that does not mean like those people will not know dsa at, at all so the, the, those people must know when to use a hash table when to use a list for the data right so basic data structures is something that those people are also familiar with right so they might not have done competitive programming they might not have done a lot of optimization problems that's perfectly okay right so being good at something definitely is important, right? And uh, if you're even too good at DSA and CP, you will end up a job. If you're too good at web development and machine learning or machine learning, you will get a good job, right? So the thing is, are you in the top 10% of the thing that you are doing, right? So like the top of the pyramid. So you, you should be in the one of the top 10, top 20 developers in your college, something like that, right? If this is good, you can do it, right? So at the end, uh, the topic that you're more interested and in, more passionate about, you will eventually spend more time learning about it, right? But again, having certain knowledge of DSA broadens your uh, set of companies that you're applying to, right? So right. If there are companies which are asking DSA and you do not know anything about it. So clearly the gates are closed, right? So it's better for the safe side, right? And it gives you like more access to opportunities if you do DSA well. But Pratik, don't you think that when we say that DSA is not real world problem solving, it's just, you know, getting students acclimatized with the concepts and theory of the things. And in our hiring process, we are asking about DSA questions only as a basic differentiator. So don't you feel that's a bit of contradictory in our hiring process? See, while it is true that many of the problem statements, they might look uh, very much hypothetical. They might not be used in the real software. And it's not daily that you solve a DSA problem while building real software. That is also true, right? right. See, if, apart from it, there is like what criteria you will follow to test the logical build, uh, building or the logical mindset of the student, right? So DSA is like one thing that is easy to evaluate based upon problems and to test your logical thinking and even coding skills, right? Are you able to use the correct syntax? Are you able to optimize it? Are you able to build better solutions? Okay. And it is not always that DSA problems are completely hypothetical, right? So if you look at uh, the various apps that are functioning, right? So maybe talk, in a, talk about like the Uber cab booking app, right? So when you're saying that I want to book a cab, what you're doing, you're finding the nearest available cars around you. So that becomes a DSA problem to solve, right? When you are uh, uploading videos to YouTube, right? So again, there must be a complete data pipeline. You, you might be doing a lot of operations in that, right? 
so again there might be certain dsa problems involved there as well like how do i queue up videos if lot of videos are coming and my processor is able to process videos up to a certain limit so i need to use a queue to store those videos right so the concept of message queues comes into picture so again uh, big complex software has lot of small dsa problems that need to be solved while designing right. big systems so it's like abcd as i told you without abcd you cannot build something right. like sa or a big thing right so it's good to learn thing and if you are a computer science student you should everyone should definitely get a hang of dsa right 